Well, we are here, so let's start. And let's start with the main question that you may want to ask. That is, what is ROS? I'm sorry, but you are not ready to understand the answer. You will need to get some work done prior to understand the answer to that question. So, let's start with the work. Go to the Ignite Academy and open the Unit 1, ROS Basics. Hello everybody and welcome to the first chapter of the ROS in a Single Week course. In this first chapter, we are going to talk about some basic concepts of ROS that you need to know in order to fully be able to understand ROS and how ROS works. For instance, some of the things we are going to see with this unit is how to structure and launch ROS programs, how to create basic ROS programs, and we are going to have a look at some basic ROS concepts such as nodes, uh, the parameter server, environment variables, and more. So let's start, and as we always do at the Robotic Night Academy, let's start by practicing and by doing things. So first thing I want you to do is to move this TouchRobot robot here. This is the simulation window and here, you can see a TurtleBot robot. So first thing I want you to do is to move this robot by using ROS. And how can you do that? Okay. You can do this by following the example 1.1 .1 in the notebook. So, I want you to write this command here, in example 1.1, .1, into the shell. Let's do it. When working with ROS, you have to try to always autocomplete the commands, not write them entirely. This will make you check that you are typing the correct command and it also will save you a lot of time. So let's execute this command. Great. Now you can control the robot by following the tips you are given right in the output of the shell or you can also follow the tips here in the notebook which at the end are the same. So let's do that. Great. As you can see, I am controlling the Tartarable robot using ROS. Have you done it also? Great. So, what has just happened? What was that command that you just executed here? So, this command is a ROS launch command. And what does a ROS launch command do? Basically, the ROS launch command is used to execute a ROS program. The structure of this command is, as you can see here, first we have the ROS launch keyword, next we specify the name of the package that contains the launch file, and finally, we specify the name of the launch file itself. Great, but what's a package? And what's a launch file? Okay, let's go by parts. First of all, what is a package? A package is a place where you will put all the ROS files related to a specific ROS program. You can think of a ROS package as a kind of container of ROS files. Packages in ROS are very, very useful in order to organize the different ROS programs that you create. Inside the package, the files also follow a type of organization. 
first we have a launch folder which contains the launch files. Second we have a source folder which contains the C++, the Python files that we have the code of the ROS program. Finally we have the cmiglist.txt file which contains data for the compilation of the package and the package.xml file which contains information of the package and of its dependencies. We can navigate through ROS packages by using the ROS CD command plus the name of the package. For instance, we can navigate to the package we've just executed in the previous command, which was Turtlebot Teleop, and we go directly to the path where that package is. So remember, every time you want to create a new ROS program, a new ROS project, you will have to put it inside a package. Great, but now, what is a launch file? Okay, a launch file is basically a file that launches a ROS program. In order to better see what a launch file is and how it works, let's have a look at one of them. For instance, let's have a look at the launch file we've executed in the, com in the command on example 1.1 which is the keyboard teleop.launch. So, inside the Tatlebot Teleop package, let's go to the launch directory, and here we will see the keyboard teleop launch file. Let's have a look at it. Let's maximize this a moment. Great. So, this is the content of a basic launch file. As you can see, all launch files are contained within a launch tag. Right here and here. Also, you can see some param and remap tags. For now, don't pay attention to these ones because they are not important now. For now, just focus on this node tag we have here. This is the key of the launch file. So inside the launch tag, we'll have a node tag. And into this node tag, we will specify the following attributes. First, we have the package attribute, where we will specify the name of the package where the ROS program we want to execute is. Second, we have the type attribute, which will specify the name of the file itself that contains the ROS program. Next, we will specify the name attribute, which contains the name of the ROS node that your program will launch. And finally, we have a notepad attribute, which specifies through which channel you want to show the output of your ROS program. You may be asking now, but what is a ROS node? Great, don't worry, we will see it in a moment. Just be patient. So great, this is the basic structure of a launch file. So now, you have already seen what is a launch file and what is a package. I think you're ready to create your own package, so let's do it. First of all, you need to know one thing. Whenever you want to create a new ROS package, you have to be in a very specific ROS workspace, which is known as the Catkin workspace. The Catkin workspace is the directory in your hard disk where your own packages must reside in order to be usable by ROS. Usually, this Catkin workspace directory is called Catkin underscore workspace. Let's do example 1.4 in order to better see the process of how to create a new package. 
So first of all, we'll type rossd, which is a command that brings us to this specific directory, which is the devil directory of the Catkin workspace. So now we will move up one directory, and we are finally in the Catkin workspace directory. As you can see, it is named Catkin underscore workspace. Catkin underscore ws. This is the Catkin workspace I just talked about. Inside this Catkin workspace, we can also see a source directory. Let's go inside this directory. Great. So as you can see, right now we are in the source directory of the Catkin workspace. This is the specific path where you will have to create your packages. Always you want to create a new ROS package, you will have to be in this specific directory. So now we are ready to create our package. In order to do this, we will use the catkin create package command. So let's introduce the catkin create package keyword plus the name we want to give to our new package. In this case, I will call it my package. And finally, we will add the dependencies we want to add to this package. In this case, we will add the RosPy dependency, which will allow us to work with Python in ROS. So let's execute it. Great. So apparently, our new package has been successfully created. But let's follow example 1.5 in order to check that everything really went correct. One thing we can use, for instance, is the rospack list command, which will give us a list with all the packages that the ROS system has. Here it is. As you can see, there's a lot of packages in the system. So I think it would be better if we filter the output of this command to specifically find our package, which name was my underscore package. And here it is, our package, great. So now I know that my package has been su successfully created. You can also see your new package in the ID section up here. Great. This ID section will allow you to work with your packages using a graphic interface. You can open files, edit them, create new ones, create new directories, whatever you want. Great, so let's move on. Now, as we have just seen, we have created a package. Great, but let me tell you something. This package right now is not useful at all. So let's change this. Let's give to our package some use. So we will write our first ROS program. For this, I want you to follow the steps shown in exercise 1.1. I will give you some time so you can complete this exercise. So when you finish with this exercise, play again the video, and we will continue with the explanation. See you in a moment. Have you finished it? Great. In the meantime, I, I've also completed the exercise by my own. So I will just execute it now. Great, so apparently it works, but I'm sure you will have some questions right now, right? Okay, so let's have a look at the code we have just executed. Great, so what does this code mean? What does this really do? What is going on here? Let's see, first of all, as you can see, 
we have a strange line here, which starts with a hashtag and an exclamation mark, plus a, plus a strange path. Okay, let me tell you that this line is very important. This line lets the system know that this is a Python file. So every time you create a new Python file in ROS, you will have to start it with this line. Remember this. Next, we are importing ROSPy. As I've told you before, ROSPy will allow you to work to use Python in ROS. The next line is just initiating a new ROS node, which is giving it the name of Obi-1. I know you may be asking, you want to know what a ROS node is, but just wait a moment, we'll see it very soon. Finally, we are just printing a simple phrase, which says, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. A very famous phrase, yes? Great, so our program initiates a note and prints a phrase. Let's check the output of our program. And yeah, apparently, here it is initiating a node, which is called obi One, And here, there is the print, which says, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Okay, so now it makes a little bit more sense. Right? Great, so now is the moment. What is a ROS node? You may have been asking. Great, so let's see. A ROS node, basically, is a process that executes a ROS program. Always you want to execute a ROS program, you have to launch first a ROS node. This is very important. We can have a look at the ROS nodes that are running right now in this ROS system by using the command ROS node list. Let's try it. So here I can see the nodes that are running right now in this ROS system. But wait a moment, did you notice something strange? Why is not the Obi-Wan node appearing here? That's a very good question. Well, the Obi-Wan node is not appearing because in our ROS program the node is killed right when the code ends. So, after executing the print, the obi one node is killed. That's why you cannot see it by using this ROS node list command. So, let's change the code's behavior so we can see the obi one node. For that, I want you to update your code with this one that appears in example 1.6. Let's do it. So I will copy this code here. And I will paste it into my current ROS program. Great. Let's now launch again our program. Okay, so I can see now that something has changed. Now it, it keeps printing and printing and printing the phrase on and on. Okay, let me try now the ROS node list command. Oh yes, and here it is, the Obi-1 node. Now I can see it. But why? What has just happened? What's this new code I added to my program? Let's have a look. As you can see, the first line and the import are the same. Also, the line where we initiate the obi one node is the same. Now, here it appears a new lane, which basically it is creating a rate object of 2 Hz. We will use this object later. Next, we are creating a loop 
which will keep executing until someone specifically stops this program. For instance, by pressing Control C. Then we do the print, and finally we use the rate object to call the sleep function. This will assure the loop is executed at a 2 Hz frequency. So, basically, what we are doing is to keep the program running. This way, the program doesn't end and we are able to see this node when we do the ROS node list. Great, so let's move on. Next thing I want to talk about is the compilation. Usually in ROS, when you create a new package, you will have to compile it in order to work. A very important thing when we want to compile packages is that we have to be in a very specific ROS directory. Just as we saw in the creation of a new package, in the compilation of a package, we also have to be in a specific ROS directory, which is the Catkin workspace. Here it is. So whenever you want to compile a package, you will have to be in this specific ROS directory. So summarizing, you have to remember that for compilation, you need to be in the Catkin workspace. And for the creation of a new package, you have to be inside the source directory of the Catkin workspace. Yes? Great. So, when I'm in the catkin workspace, the command I will use in order to compile a package is catkin underscore make. Let's execute it. Let's wait a moment. It is done. Great. In this case, I have to say that that it hasn't compiled anything really because we are using the Python code. But anyways, it's important that you know that usually you have to compile your packages. Understood? Great. So now I want you to complete this example 1.7 so you can see some extra information about compilation in ROS. I will leave you some minutes so you can complete it. See you in a moment. Done? Great. Next concept I want to introduce is the parameter server, the ROS parameter server. The ROS parameter server is basically a dictionary that ROS uses in order to store parameters. Usually these parameters are static data such as configuration for sensors and so on. Then the ROS system can access these parameters at any time in order to use them for its programs or for whatever it wants. Of course, you can get these parameters and you can also store parameters into this parameter server. In order to better see how you can interact with the ROS parameter server, complete this example 1.8. I will wait here until you finish. Are you done? Great. The next concept we will see is the ROS score. The ROS score is the main process in ROS. It manages all the communication between the different nodes. You can think of the ROS core as the main father process that controls all the ROS system. So whenever you want to work with ROS, you must have a ROS core running. The command used in order to launch a ROS core is ROS core, pretty obvious, right? 
But let me tell you one thing. In the Robot Ignite Academy, which is the system you are using to learn ROS, you don't need to execute this command because the ROS score is automatically launched whenever you start a course. Anyways, the ROS score is a very important thing in ROS and you need to know it because if you work with ROS locally, you will always have to launch a ROS score. Understood? So let's go on. So the last concept I will introduce to you are the ROS environment variables. ROS uses a set of Linux system environment variables in order to work. We can have a look at these variables by typing the next command in a shell. Let's do it. The command is export pipe and grep ROS. Here they are. These are the ROS environment variables. For now, I just want you to know about two of them. One is the ROS master URI. The ROS master URI contains the URL where the ROS query is being executed. This is very useful, for instance, if you want to access a ROS system that is being executed in a robot from any computer. The next variable is ROS package path. This variable is very important because it contains all the paths where ROS has packages in. So if you have a package in any place that is not specified in this ROS package path, ROS won't see it. ROS won't be able to use it. So these are the two ROS environment variables I want you to know for now. And that's all for this first chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. And now, with these basic concepts you have, you are more prepared and you are ready to better understand what ROS is. But let me tell you one thing. In this first chapter, you have just scratched the surface of what ROS really is. ROS is an amazing tool, and I really encourage you to follow with the course and to follow with the next chapters so you can see and you can learn all the amazing things you can achieve with ROS. I know you will do it. So, see you soon. After this introduction to ROS, you are now a little bit more ready to understand what is ROS. ROS is a framework, it's a set of tools that allow the easy creation of programs for robots. The main advantage of ROS is that programs created with ROS are easily interchangeable between different robots. And that is all you need to know about what is ROS. In the next chapter, we are going to learn what are ROS topics, and this is one of the core points of ROS, so be ready to learn a lot.